Okay, we're gonna start with you in the blue shirt. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, the Fantasia segment was just an inspiration, a jumping off point, but can you talk about um, what aspects of that find their way into the film, whether they're stylistic uh, for the actors, did you ga gather some physicality from looking at that, that original animation? Uh, yeah, you go with this one. Jay. <laughs> Jay, Jay's, Jay is the apprentice, and so um, Mickey Mouse wasn't available, so... <laughs> <laughs> It was cheaper. Um, <laughs> not a lot. Um, it was, we knew we couldn't make it a whole movie. And it wasn't just the, the story that we had to get into the film, but where there, there's a segment of the movie that somewhat recreates relevant, in a relevant way to our film, that section. Uh, we didn't want to just do a little nod and say, aren't we cute? Here's a little nod to Fantasia. We wanted to make it also have some kind of relevance to the plot. So that's all there. There's an obviously the fun is with you know you may know Nick really developed this. Nick hired me, came to me, and when he talked about it, the notion of taking advantage of CG and, and new technology to do this was great. That's the excitement of it. But we also spent a lot of time looking at the cinematography of Fantasia. The, There's the some shot for shot writing. recreations in that sequence, I think. Yeah. And in wardrobe and things like that to suggest and, and not and, and you know Jay you know had to to play that and, and yeah I mean I I basically like I just I uh, I would use any part I'm playing with physical comedy so when I get to do something like pay homage to one of the great funny sequences in film history I just kind of was chomping at the bit and so I you know I I tried my best to kind of um, yeah, give my respect to that sequence and to what Mickey did but to kind of do my own thing as well. Right here? Yeah, um, like I want to do, uh, you have kick-ass in this game now, you've got this project coming up. Um, what is it about this world that's drawn to obviously kind of serve an adrenaline thing? What about specifically sorcerers? Yeah, I mean, what is it that drew you to it? I mean, obviously you were very involved, but I just wanted to know about these sorts of lines. Well, you know, I, when you're playing supernatural characters, um, like Ghost Rider or City of Angels, Next, uh, and now Sorcerer of Apprentice, there's a, 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 an infinite number of possibilities that you can do with the character. And I also think it provides really wonderful entertainment for the whole family. You know, you don't have a high body count. You don't have to if that's not to your tastes. The children and the parents can congregate together, look forward to this together, and buy the tickets. I know you've always seen Sorcerer's Apprentice. That's important. You know, families get together and share that experience with each other, and it takes the adults as much as the kids. And you can, you can do that with a film like Sorcerer's Apprentice. So when I came up with this idea, I was on Next, and I was doing, I was talking with Todd Gardner, who was also the producer, that I said, yeah, I really want to play a magician. You know, I want to play like a sorcerer. And it came in the next day, and I got it. It's the source was a crime. So then I went to uh, my partner at the time, Norman Galagli, and we got a script actress. And we all thought, you know, we'd really put this on a fast track. It would give it all the panache and all the big entertainment style. Nobody better than Jerry Bruckner. So we went to Jerry, the man, you know, the, the, the good friend and the great producer that he is. He read it and he said, hey, you know, what are we doing? And we just got off of National Treasure 2, and that was a great experience. And we thought John and Anna could really do it and make this unique, because there have been other movies that are supernatural, like the Pod and whatnot. Bring the comedy and the humor into it and make it really connect with big audiences of kids and John Turtle talk. And that's how it happened. Just so you know, Nick has laryngitis. He's not trying to sound. It's <laughs> <laughs> cool, but he doesn't need to sound that cool. <laughs> Doesn't he sound so cool right now? <laughs> it's really awesome. Al Pacino. I'm, I'm going to play Howling Wolf in my next movie. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I wanted to ask you, sorry to make you talk when you're sick. No, but... I'm here to talk, man. I'm just going to talk. You sound nice and crisp. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said, you sound nice and grizzly. Okay. <laughs> How important is transforming your appearance and the look of this character, particularly having long hair again? Yeah, well, listen, man. I mean, it's like, look, 
you know, actors work with their look. I come from the Lon Chaney Senior School of Acting. <laughs> I want to transform myself every time I get. I'll wear wigs, I'll wear nose pieces, I'll wear a green contact lens in my eye. I'll do whatever I need to do to create a character. That's what it's about. That's the fun of it, you know? And so I wanted Balthazar to have a look like a, a, like, a like an ancient, uh, uh, well, Jerry says like an ancient rock star, you know? <laughs> he has that kind of cool style that harkens back to, to the 500s or the 600s, which is where he came from. He was, Merlin was his teacher, you know, so I wanted him to have that look throughout, you know, he goes through different ages and then he starts with it like, a, like an ancient magician when you meet him in New York City. But the hair you, you only alter a few times, like Con Air or Adaptation when you're playing something real. Is that something yeah. No, I'm always changing the color, or like now I'm in a movie called Drive Angry, and I'm trying to get my, uh, tapped into my Celtic roots, so I dyed it blonde. <laughs> 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 uh, this is for Jay. Uh, I like the entertainment that comes out of that studio, and so, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it is a, like in the spirit of Disney, it is truly a dream come true, you know? It's magical. Well, I mean, what's what's amazing, like what John was saying earlier, you know, is we have the technology now to make these wonderful things come to life in, 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 uh, in live action feature. So you have the, the boom sequence is actually going to happen. With this time with Dustbusters and the nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in like an adaptation, you'll uh, hold back, and then other times, like Bad Lieutenant, uh, Wicker Man, you'll just go for broke. How do you decide um, how much you're going to go for it and how much you're going to hold back with each performance? Yeah, right. Well, thank you for noticing. Uh, well, first of all, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to talk about the work, right? Because when you talk about the work, it's kind of stupid because the work speaks for itself, you know? And I don't want to name it because when you name it, it loses its mystery, right? I tell you exactly what I'm thinking or what I was up to, and I have been guilty of that, then you lose your secret connection with the, with the work of art, right? Um, but, and I digress, but I went on Dick Cavett many years ago and I met Miles Davis. And I was talking about things like art synthesis and Picasso, and you could do with acting what he did or, or with music. And, and Miles came out and he got it, you know, he was looking at me and giving this like, not any wings me, Miles Davis, you know? And we were sharing the trumpet together. And ever since then, because he accepted whatever my philosophy was, I, uh, I believe that uh, I wanted to approach acting as jazz. And so he became like a surrealist father of sorts along with Walt Disney. And I thought, okay, well, this time, I'm just gonna let anything come out, whatever it may be, like bad lieutenant, you know? But sometimes it's really, thought out and constructed and carefully thought about like adaptation. So so I always like to mix it up. You know? I hope that answers your question. Fantasy film and do you like sci-fi slash fantasy yourself? I mean we're just on Yeah, well I absolutely appreciate the sci-fi genre um, for sure. And I think for me I was just so excited um, by the whole idea of it being the source of apprentice and I grew up watching Fantasia and you know, I obviously grew up watching a lot of Nick's films as well, and you know, Con Air and Raising Arizona, you know, my favorite movies, and I think the most incredible performances on the screen. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that I heard that Nick was in the film, it was just so exciting, and, and um, you know, I have this like, incredible journey and movie, and I'm a big fan of all the films that Jerry's done, the Pirates trilogy especially, and yeah, it's such a dream from the truth. She's not actually Australian, it's laryngitis. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Thank you very much.